Hey, what's up guys? David Moss Jr. here. And before you go spend five plus thousand dollars on a cold plunge, check this video out and consider this. If you get colder, you're gonna feel better. I've been cold plunging for almost a year now consistently. I do it at minimum five times per week. I crave the cold. I did it all through winter. I did it through summer. I'm doing it into spring. I'm ready to hit all four seasons of cold plunging. This is my ice barrel DIY. I've got a chiller set up with a pump and a filter. I keep my water circulating. The water's always at a nice 50 degrees in this barrel. I've got a few other cold plunges that are colder. 50 degrees is really good for that normal, every single day. Get in there for three to five minutes and just feel really, really good. The cool thing about this DIY setup is I have a chiller set up that I can literally turn it down to 37 degrees and I can get it cold and I can keep it cold for whenever I want. The reason I keep it at 50 degrees, honestly, my wife and my kids use this also every day. Super active family. Cold plunging has become a huge part of our recovery and a huge part of who we are. And I wanna just use this video to show you my cold plunge routine that I do every day, unless I have to jump into my really, really cold one. And it all depends on how my workout was in the morning and what my plan is for the day. So I'm gonna do my little normal plunge in this right here, my ice barrel DIY setup. A lot of people have seen the video of me building this. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna put it right up there check it out. I'm also going to post the link in the description below and I'm going to post the links to everything I have used here including a discount link for Ice Barrel if you want to get an Ice Barrel for yourself. So before I jump in I want to answer a few questions that you guys are always asking in the comments. So here we go. So question number one, why Ice Barrel? I mean we've got horse troughs and there's so many other ways to get cold. Why, why spend the money and buy an Ice Barrel? Well, I'm going to tell you it's a good looking plunge. It takes up a very small amount of space. You can fill it with ice. It's super easy to drain. It's super easy to fill. It holds over 100 gallons of water. And I'm six foot one and I'm a pretty stocky guy and I get in this thing extremely comfortably. I love the fact that you get into it and then you squat, whereas most of the other plunges you lay down in. It's just a whole different experience. I think there's a place for both. But anytime anybody asks me, what would you do if you could do it all over again? I have to say Ice Barrel. I truly have to say Ice Barrel. I think it's affordable as far as getting yourself into a really good plunge affordably and easily. So I'm a huge fan of Ice Barrel for a lot of different reasons. I fit in it, it's affordable for the most part, and I know a lot of people have that question, like I would never spend the money on Ice Barrel. I, I see that sometimes, I see people. But where you say you would never spend the money on Ice Barrel, there's a thousand other people who have spent the money on Ice Barrel and would recommend it to every single person. I'm one of them, I love Ice Barrel. So I'm a huge fan of this. Um, you don't have to do the DIY chiller setup. I like it because I'm very active and I'm all over the place, I'm really busy, so I like to be able to just jump in, know it's gonna be cold, and get in when I wanna get in. So I, I like the DIY setup, you don't have to do it, you can use just ice. If you have access to an industrial ice maker at your house or factory or workplace, pff, don't even use a chiller, just grab that ice and throw it in there all day every day, right? So there's a lot of really cool reasons that I like the ice barrel. I'm curious, if you have an ice barrel, you follow my DIY setup, can you post in the comments below that you did it, but also how your experience is going? I love hearing from the community, from the cold plunge community. So please engage and please let me know how your journey is going, right? Question number two, how do you keep the water clean? And doesn't it get gross if you leave the water in there with the chiller for a while? Yes, it does get gross, unless you take care of it, right? So I posted a few videos of how I keep my water clean. I use hydrogen peroxide. I don't like a lot of chemicals. So hydrogen peroxide in the water seems to do a really good job for the most part when it does start to get a little bit murky. I try to use the same water for a while. I know that may sound a little gross, but the only people really getting in here is me, my wife, my kids, and sometimes some of the neighbor kids, but they'll jump in the pool, they'll jump in the barrel. So it's not like they're out sweating and peeing in the barrel. So it keeps the water okay. But when I really need to clean it, if I don't wanna drain the water and start over, I'll use an ozone generator. I posted a video on how I use an ozone generator to clean the water, it does a really good job as well. But Ice Barrel also has a, a stabilizer, a water stabilizing kit that I just ordered, so I got that coming, and I'm gonna do a review on how that works. Um, I had a bad experience with a stabilizing kit with another plunge before, so I kinda stay away from some of that stuff, so I'm excited to see how this works, and I'll let you guys know on a future video. But for me, I pretty much use hydrogen peroxide exclusively, the ozone generator when I feel like I need to, but also check this out. See at the bottom, there's this little spigot that's super easy to just drain the water from the bottom. So when the water gets really gross and there's sediment at the bottom or anything kind of sitting at the bottom that I need to get out, well, I just drain it, fill it back up, turn the chiller back on. And if you're one of those people who's just gonna use ice, well, I would say that it's very, very easy to drain it once you're done, 
fill it back up with water and throw some ice in there. So super easy to keep clean, also super durable. And then question number three, how often do you use it and how do you really use it? And what are the, what do you feel? Like what are the experiences when you're cold plunging? So I've convinced a lot of people that were super skeptics on cold plunging, my father included, on getting this set up and using it regularly. And I'm not gonna tell you his story, I'd love for him to share his story on here one day, but his shoulder has always been hurt. He's an avid golfer, he, he's an active guy, he's a coach, he's a baseball coach, he's a football coach, he's doing a lot of stuff right now and being active is super important to him. So, and it's super important to me and it's super important to a lot of people. So what we've been doing is getting in the cold plunge for three to five minutes a day. All you have to do is make sure the water's under 60 degrees. That's the main thing. It doesn't have to be 30. So if you hear me talking about this being 50 degrees and you're like, oh, David, you're this avid cold plunger, but you're doing 50 degree water, like that's super weak sauce, right? Maybe it is, but I feel great when I get out of it. So at the end of the day, it's all about my experience. It's not about yours, it's about my experience. For me, 50 degrees is awesome. I can get in there for five minutes, feel really, really good, and be ready to tackle my day. Obviously, there's a place for colder water, there's a place for warmer water, so you can do a little bit of both. But I'm gonna show you my routine and we're gonna talk through it here right now. Rule number one, never get in sweaty. I know people do that, but that seems kinda gross. So always rinse off the sweat. Had a good workout this morning. before you get in. Woo! <laughs> oh man, so, you know this right when I got in, the first thing I did was go underwater. So I've learned that when you get in slow, it's just prolonging the torture. But what you wanna do is you wanna get underwater and activate that fight or flight mechanism as fast as possible. So. Don't take your time to get in, literally get in, get underwater, stay underwater for a couple seconds, and then try to keep that water up to your neck. Oh. Control your breath, and then just embrace it. Embrace the cold. Hang out in here for three minutes. <laughs> Hang out in here for three minutes. Three minutes is kind of that sweet spot, you know? like. Five minutes is good, six, seven minutes is great. Dr. Andrew Huberman says 11 minutes per week in uncomfortably cold water is the, tr is the secret spot, is the trick. That's what you wanna get to. So keep a calendar, keep track, get to that 11 minutes a week. If you don't have an ice barrel or a cold plunge or you know a frozen lake in your backyard, then just take a cold shower, obviously, it's different, but it still has similar effects. So I got a couple buddies who are professional athletes who have been ice bathing, ice, ice bathing, ice bathing, cold plunging, getting cold exposure for forever. You know, it's, it's not a new thing. I think it's new for the general population who who were not athletic athletes or in that athletic world. But um, you know, they did this just purely for recovery. There's so many cool studies out now that are proving all the benefits of deliberate cold exposure from fat loss, from just obviously health, healthier joints, bones, bone density. There's so many cool benefits that if you Google, just Google benefits of cold exposure, ice baths, watch some of Andrew Huberman's podcasts. So much amazing stuff is coming out and it's super cool. But anyway, back to my... Uh, athlete friends. So I got a couple buddies who've been doing this for a long time and you find that getting to the point of shiver is actually the goal. And I know a lot of times, especially being younger, our parents told us, don't get cold if you're shivering. Oh, you're shivering. Here, get a warm blanket. Like, no, actually when you start shivering, that's your body turning into a thermogenic furnace machine. And that's when you know you've reached that point. That's when you know you're at the zone. So obviously when you start shivering is when you do want to get out, give your body a chance to recover but getting to the point of shiver is not bad. And I actually have a video I'll post right up here uh, where I explore and experiment with the benefits of shivering and kind of show you how you can get to that point a little bit faster than just sitting in cold water for a long period of time. So you gotta check that video out after this one. Actually, I'll post that at the end of this video too so you can just watch it, check it out. It's actually really, really cool. And uh, hey, I appreciate you guys watching this, my content, helping me grow this channel, helping me spread the word. This is a video that I would encourage you to share with a friend, you know, post it on social media, 
ask ask people, hey, do you think I should get into cold cold exposure? Like, do a poll, check it out, see what people think. Um, if you have any questions on Ice Barrel or any of the other plunges, I have multiple plunges. This is just my plunge of choice most days. So uh, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you like this video, show me by hitting the like button. That always feels nice to see some likes. It means I actually did a good job. And uh, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Lots of cool content coming out and uh, lots of cool content in the hopper that's coming soon. So I appreciate you guys for watching. It's been about four minutes. I'm gonna get back under this water, finish off my plunge and go have a nice, productive, amazing day at work. You guys all have a great day as well and God bless.